Hey, welcome back. My name is Josh, and today I want to go over a new lesson on harmony. Uh, what you just heard was green sleeves, and that was in a minor key, um, specifically A minor. So I thought it'd be fun to go over how to harmonize uh, something in a minor key using just a melody line that's on the top of this uh, staff here, played by the violin one. You'll notice that this isn't the full length of green sleeves. Um, this is kind of the first half of it. Uh, just for the sake of time, I wanted to, um, you know, at least go through a cadence with you to get you started and to understand uh, how this works with your harmony, your music theory, uh, your Roman numeral analysis, even. So uh, we'll we'll go about all of that in today's lesson. So just as a basic run through, you have chord symbols on the top telling you the chord progression. I have a Roman numeral analysis below. And then I, I just want to mention, notice how on violin two, uh, it kind of stays within its own territory or range of notes. As you'll notice that um, it doesn't really go any higher than, let's say, a D. Let's just go ahead and scan through, okay? And then the lowest note would be, looks like a B here. Now, um, the reason why I'm wanting to point this out is because uh, you want to leave some room for each instrument. Um, you don't want the instrument to leap too far up and down um, because there are other instruments that will clash or conflict with each other. So uh, I would say a general rule of thumb is give each instrument its own territory. Okay, so own territory of notes, or another way of putting it is a own harmonic range. Okay, and then so to now go ahead and demonstrate um, how I went about this, I'm just going to delete. Uh, let's try just maybe the first half of this. Uh, um, we'll stop at the cadence. So what I'll do is I'm going to delete this. So now what we have here is just the melody and the chord symbols. Now the chord symbols kind of give me some clues and much like let's say a Sudoku puzzle where um, it, you know if it's on an easy level, it gives you more clues and you can solve it faster. And as it gets more difficult, uh, when the clues are taken away, you have to do more problem solving skills. So uh, f first of all, if I'm going to start, I would probably start with the baseline. So the first thing is I'm going to make sure that I'm moving together. So this is a homophonic movement. Um, what I'll do is I'll go mm. E. Okay, following that, I'm looking at the bass line and, um, and, and the chord symbols. So if it's just A minor, I am going to do the root note for the cello. So I can go up or down. Um, I'm going to choose to go up in this case, going with the motion of the melody. And then what I'll do next is I'm going to stay on the A. Now followed by the A in that first measure, you'll see on the next measure chord symbol, I have a, a, a minor over E. So I'm going to actually put the, the E um, in the bass line now. Um, and I should make that a dotted. Okay. So then I'll go up to an A, and then I'm going to go back down to an E. Now, again, this is a root, so I'll just stick with the G. Let's go ahead and do a D. Oh, that's not a D. And then B, another D, and then a G. All right, going over to the C in the melody, I have a, a, um, a C there, so um, it actually gives me an A, so uh, inverted F chord with the A in the bass line. And then we have here another, um, I have a choice to do an A or an F, I'm going to go down, and then let's do another F, and then let's go ahead 
F sharp. Okay, here I need to change that to a G sharp. Like that. Now let's do an A. And then followed by an E. G sharp. And then let's finish that off to an E. Like that. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and check everything. Make sure it sounds okay. Alright, so I'm going to now go up to the alto line, which is violin 2, and let's go ahead and harmonize. So it would be good to also start on a different note here. Um, now every now and then it's okay to cross, which uh, you'll, you may see um, here in a little bit. So I'm going to change um, note from E, and I think I'm going to go up to an A, like that. Let's hear how that sounds. Great. So I like how it starts already. Now there's a passing tone from this C to a D in the A minor chord. Now I have a choice to also do a passing tone um, to that. So let's experiment and let's add an, a B, uh, the, uh, wrong B, like that. And I'm curious how that would sound. That's actually different from my original, um, but that's okay. So I'm going to also do a passing tone, and then let's now harmonize to this next note, uh, E on the soprano line. So let's do a C, like that, and make that a dot, um, like so. Okay, now we have an eighth note. Here, let's do a D and then let's go back down to a C now let's do a B because right now we're spelling out a G chord so we have G in the bass B um, in the violin 2 D in the violin 1 now here let's go to a G all right now just using that Sudoku brain of mine trying to figure out how this all all will fit um, contour speaking I'm going down with the violin one so here I think I'm gonna do the same thing go contouring down and do a D okay all right and then next I have here and then a G let's do quarter note G like that okay so uh, let's go ahead and hear how that sounds with just the violin one, violin two. Okay, great. So the, the passing tone that happened between the uh, first measure actually worked out really well. So I'm going to keep that and keep going. So now on the next part, we have a F chord. So let's do um, an A below that C melody. But we do need to make that a half note. And then let's do an F. Let's stay on the F. We'll make that a dotted F though. And then let's go to an E. And go back to an F. Okay, next chord is an E. So let's try a G sharp. Okay, great. And then let's go down and contour motion, so we're going in parallel thirds here, and then the E, we have a B, like so. Okay, great. Now, um, I'm going to play this um, second half, starting here, and I'll hear how that sounds. Okay, that kind of sounded weird. Uh, that might just be some weird phasing issue. Um, it's, it's sounding a little weird with the samples there. Um, now, 
also, I should just mention as a side note, um, a lot of the times when you're harmonizing, you're going to you're going to think of is it going to move in parallel motion? So meaning as um, let me just highlight this. So as I'm going through the melody here, it's going uh, uh, ascending upwards. And so here, this is also ascending upwards. Now there were uh, common practice rules established back in the classical period and on uh, that a lot of people followed. Um, there are certain things like parallel fourths and parallel fifths, octaves, things like that, where that was a no-no, a lot of people frowned upon. Um, but um, nowadays, what I'm showing you is not trying to be such a stickler on the rules, but just to kind of give you uh, an idea of how that would work. So moving in parallel thirds and sixes are good. So in, the, in, this, in cases like here, um, the, the, these two notes are a third apart from each other, and as it's moving up, it's in, it's going in parallel thirds, and that's pretty good. Um, a lot of to our our human ears, that sounds really good. Um, parallel fourths, for some reason, uh, was not a pleasant tone or a pleasant sound back in the day. Um, I'm not much. I'm not going to go into the uh, rules so much as I am just showing you. Uh, a good approach um, to get you started at least. And then if you'd like to explore more on the common practice rules, you can do so and there's plenty of resources on that. Okay, now we are left with the viola part. So let's go back now and start with viola. Now over on viola, I have to be in between the cello and the violin too. So let's go ahead and figure out what chord I'm in. The first chord is A minor, so I have really one choice to make um, if I don't want to double on anything. So I can go here and do a C. Okay, so on this C, I have here um, a choice to either move up again or I can stay on the note. Um, but in this case, I, I have some room to move. So what I'll do is um, I am going to move now to the uh, E note. And also, you'll see how no nothing is doubling so far. And then let's go to the next note. And let's just stay on the E. Okay. And then from here, let's stay on the E again. Um, I don't have a lot of choice in the matter. I can move along with this, but um, what I'm going to do, because I don't want to, well, let's see here. Ba -da -da. I mean, I can either stay on the same note and do another E, or I can go up to an A. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to stay down here just so... Um, there is a constant um, note m moving through, so it kind of stays grounded. And now I'm going to start uh, stick with my A. Now we're on a G chord. I have a choice to either go up or go down, or I can stay. I can, you know, maybe just stay down to a D like this. All right, and then I am going to now stay on that D. Now another G chord. Let's, let's actually go to a B this time. Okay, make that a dotted B. And let's stay on the B. Go to an uh, D. And then let's try a F here. There's a little bit of a hole from this A. Then we have an F, A. Okay, so um, just to double check everything, what I'm going to do is now listen to um, this isolated. Okay. Now I can also add the cello and hear that. Okay. Uh, we're on that inverted F chord. Um, I'm, I'm actually on the F here in the viola. 
I have a choice to move contour down or I can also stay in the F, but if I stayed on the F, you'll notice here this F and this F here are the same. So to avoid that um, doubling of note, which isn't bad by the way, I'm just going to try to move the note and, and, uh, and, uh, and have its note in its own pocket. So uh, we have here C. Oops. Okay, middle C. And then let's just stay on the middle C here. And let's go down. So as all the other notes are going down here, and then cello is doing the contrary motion going up. Um, we're almost done. Let's just finish this off. So um, let's go back to the middle C. And then what I'll do is I'm going to go down to a B half note. And I have a choice to move, but if I, let's say, stay on the B, I, I have notes in its own pocket here. So again, I'm just gonna not do any doubling. And then um, on this last cadence um, part, I'm going to maybe do a G sharp like that. Okay, so let's listen to the second half all together. <laughs> As you'll see here, everything um, sounds good as far as that goes. So let's just go back and play the whole thing one more time. Okay, great. So I think uh, so far it looks really good. And then what I was going to do is also just uh, mention Roman numeral analysis as a way to look at it on the theory side. So real quick, I'm just going to um, start from the beginning. Uh, right now we're in the key of A minor. So normally if it's a minor uh, chord, Roman numerals would be on a lower case like that. Okay. Next we have an A minor over E, which is actually a 6-4 chord. Um, my notation software can't really do the 6-4 perfectly like how it normally would with the 6 and then the 4 underneath. It, this uh, slash um, is how I, I have to do it. So moving to the G, the G is actually a 7th chord. And then we have uh, G again. And this is also an inverted 6-4 uh, chord. So I'm going to do it like that. Then we have an F over A. So F in the uh, um, in context of an A minor key is actually a sixth. Then we have a sixth. E is the fifth of the chord, but it's inverted, so it's a five six chord. And then back to the six six chord. Here we have now an E, so dominant. Um, then we have here uh, E over G sharp, which is that, and then an E. Okay, great. Oh, actually, mistake. There we go. So now what I'm going to say here, just looking at the Roman numeral analysis, um, it's also very common to add a seventh chord on there. So if I were to, let's say, do a dominant seventh on the... Uh, end of that cadence. Let's see how that would sound. So I'm going to change one of these notes here to make it so that there is a dominant. So typically you can uh, change the fifth, and in this case the uh, violin two has it. I'm going to move that to a D. And let's hear how that would sound like that. So let's go back and hear it from here. And that gives it just a little bit more uh, richness to the chord. So I'm going to actually uh, keep it there and change that to an E7. Okay. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope that helped you to figure out how harmony works, uh, homophonic harmony works with uh, a melody line that's in a minor key. Now, um, 
With that being said, if you want to get started with your own harmonies, I would encourage you to get a lead sheet, something that has just the melody line with the chord changes above, and then practice doing some four part writing, meaning uh, add the bass line, fill in the inner voices, uh, whether that's just one other voice or two voices to make it four part. Um, that is a really good way to practice your four part writing and your orchestrating uh, down the road. So if you found this video helpful, press that like button to get this video to be more visible, share it to your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. One last plug is I did write a small guide for anyone who wants to compose and do this as a full-time gig. Um, I have a little guide called 10 Tips on Becoming a Better Composer. And these are tips that has helped me to uh, uh, get me to where I am as a full-time composer. And I hope that will help you down the road. So you can get the copy of the book with the link in the description below. Okay, well keep composing, have fun, and I'll see you next time.